Oh, good day, Max here again. Welcome back to the shop. So, in this video, we are going to do the preliminary machining on our angle plates. Now, <laughs> we'd be going back a couple of years ago now where I did the um, first part of these angle plates. So, I don't know if we're to call this part one or part two. We'll just call it angle plates, shop tooling. <laughs> So yeah, we've got to machine up as much as we can and because we need to use them. So these are the angle plates I fabricated a couple of years back. I'm pretty sure they're out of 350 grade plate, uh, which yeah, does squirm and move around when you start machining it. But I did have them in a very large uh, fire to hopefully maybe do a bit of stress relieving on them. They were in a large fire for 12 to 14 hours and then they had several days cool off period before I could touch them and get them out the ashes. Um, there's a video on it and hopefully I'll try and put a link in when I did do these. So it was a rather large fillet weld on the backs of them. I'll go through that and we'll have an end view. So like I say, it's, this is the preliminary machining. We'll machine them up because I do need to use them in a job and we'll just see how much they move. If they move, they might, I don't know. We'll see what happens. So I'll just swing you down onto, I'll just show you something on the uh, weld detail. So as far as the weld prep on these, this large fillet weld here is not there for strength or to look pretty or so I can profile a radius in or anything like that. It has a mechanical function when we did the welding. So, <coughs> This plate continues along here. Now, our weld prep came to there and to there like that. The reason it's done like that, say for instance, there's a laminate in this plate, maybe running along there or something. That means we still have a full weld on covering the thickness of the plate and we don't lose any of our strength because there's a laminate in it. Laminates happen, it's not uncommon and yeah that's why. Now this fillet weld here is there to keep our plate straight so if I angle the camera around let's just set that on there let's we'll set a square on there so you can see that straight now that's the purpose of that weld there so I use a jet as a general three-in-one process so for every one bead here you put three here. Now that's to keep an unbraced, this was welded in its unbraced condition. So using the three in one process, three times more weld on one side to the other. And you can see they're both dead square. I'm um, going back to this weld prep. So if our plate was running along there. Now if we had just done either Feed, feed that like that and use the same welding technique three three you know put one bead on that side and then three on that side and alternate to keep it straight that or a weld prep just like that either or what the situation arises then, if you have a laminate still, which you don't know because the plate's not X-rayed, you're really only bonding to half the thickness of the plate or down to the thickness of where that laminate is. So that's the reason for the other V running the other way. So then your weld covers the whole thickness of the plate. I'm sure there's plenty of qualified welders out there that will either agree or disagree with me on that one. Interesting to hear. 
Okay, so we've got our plates. They are nice and square from our welding, and I've got them sitting on an aluminium strip underneath, uh, just so we don't do, or one, so we don't do any damage to our table, and two, just in case there's any concave curves in, say, that way, or we're not going to add stress to our part. So they seem to be sitting quite well on here without wobbling. So I think I'll just put strap clamp between the two like that. And we'll put one at each end. Uh, we're going to need another T-slot nut. Yeah, it's good to do it. A job like this is a nice break for me because it just it just gives me a break from those um, fiddle fart jobs. <laughs> you can sort of just switch off and mosey along. Well, not switch off. You're still going to be switched on when you're doing this, especially with machines like this. But uh, your concentration is of a different level. So pretty good like that. Probably measure back. Uh, 263 back to the machine column. We've got this side. Uh, 265. Uh, this one's got to come in 2 mil. Two sixty three ish. Two sixty three ish. Okay, let's pull them down at that. I'm not going to worry about indicating indicating them. We'll just take a light cut, cut across. If it looks all right, we'll just roll with it. If it looks wonky, then we'll indicate it. Okay. <laughs> this will make you laugh. Old Russian machine. Have to wind her up. Should be enough, sis, she'll start. That's got it. <laughs> uh, that's just the central lubrication pump for the machine. Works quite well. Hopefully it gets everywhere. 
So I usually run these cutters, it's an 80mm cutter. I usually run them on about 60mm, uh, 80mm. I normally run them on about 800 RPM. Um, we'll see, I don't know if I may, next one down 6.30. And we're going to be at the first part of our cut. We're going to chomp through these welds at the bottom, so... Yeah. Uh, we'll leave it. We'll leave it on eight hundred. Okay, we'll have a look at that. That's pretty good for its first cut, so I'm happy with our setup that we are even enough. So we'll take um, I'll take another two mil off.
We'll take a one millimetre cut and that should bring our weld down to meet up with this level here. Well, they call them roughing cuts for a reason. <laughs> it actually looks a lot worse than what it feels. That feels like a nice scraped machine way. <laughs> these have got a bit of heat into them, so I'm going to have to let these uh, cool off. And we're getting, they were ringing a bit. We're getting a bit of chatter, a bit of ringing. So I think what we may look at is I might rotate the inserts and we'll do a light cut at a high feed and, and see if we can't get around some of this chatter. Um, I don't really have any other means of, of putting an additional clamp on the top just to sort of stabilise it. But we'll try new inserts, light cut, rapid feed when they cool off. So I might go and have some lunch. The other thing too, considering that was a one millimetre cut, so it's quite good we got a full clean up. So it just shows how square our plates were. So full clean up on a one millimetre cut. Like they're not actually that bad. There's still a lot of life left in them, but. Uh, in order to try and eliminate that ring chatter that we're getting, we've got to do everything we possibly can without going to drastic measures. So we do all the small things first. I'll bring you back. Okay, so I'm going to run a, uh, a cleanup cut through and see how it goes. We're going to still keep the same RPM, 800 RPM, and we're only going to be using half the diameter of the cutter at a time. 
and I'm going to run it through on 830 millimeters a minute feed and our cut will be uh, 0.25 millimeters so a quarter of a millimeter so we'll just see if it improves anything Okay, we'll go around the other side and have a look. Has marginally improved it. Still not happy though. So we've got no option. We have to keep running through and we'll just repeat what we've just done till we've covered the whole face. So totally not happy with that, that's even worse. So what I'm going to do is uh, drop our RPM of our cutter. We'll drop it from 800 down to 630 and we'll leave the feed the same. So that cut, I didn't put any infeed in. I was curious to see if there was any spring left or what would happen. So it took absolutely nothing off. So we'll, we'll put in a very light cut, maybe um, 0.1 of a mil. So we'll go point, yeah, point, point 0.2. So 
see what happens. No, we're still getting that chatter. Okay, we'll have to go to plan C. Okay, this will be plan C. We'll drop our feed down to 400 millimeters a minute. We'll keep with the 630 RPM. And I took 50% of the inserts out of the cutter. So it's a six insert cutter and we're only running three inserts. We'll see what happens. Right, we'll get you swung around. Okay, at least we're making an improvement now. Up the top, I think we've still got some of the remnants of chatter from before. So what I might try is staggering the inserts and uh, one final finish pass. I've got every second insert out. So what I might do is break up that pattern I'll put two together, leave a gap, maybe run two together just to spread them out so it's not a continual, uh, well, so that it, it, it reduces, well hopefully will reduce the, the effects of harmonics. Um, similar like a variable flute angle, variable helix angle end mill. So we'll give that a try. Failing that, we've got to put some bracing on these, which is not an option I really want to do. So I could tack weld a couple of pieces to them and that would fix it straight away. Um, so if I have to do that, then I'm, I don't really want to risk, run the risk of welding on this machine with the amount of electrics that are on this machine. So I would have to take them out to do it, then we'd have to reset them back up. So I'm going to try offset the inserts and we'll have one last crack at it. Okay, we'll go again. So we ended up putting, we have one insert there. We come around half a turn. Oh, sorry. Two inserts together, come around half a turn, and one insert by itself. So still running three inserts. Still going to run 630 RPM, 
and our feed rate it will remain the same on uh, 400 millimeters a minute so and I've only got a very light cut on like 0.1 of a mil let's just see what it does we must be like up to about plan D Pull that one up there because I can feel that with my fingers. So I've got no option. I've got to do what I didn't want to do and that's go with some form of bracing. The problem is, is we have our vertical head. So when we're down the bottom of the plate, this comes up in, in this gap here. And it will interfere with any bracing. So let me have a think and see what I can come up with. I don't really want to swing the vertical head out of the way as it's all clocked in and I need it clocked in for the next job. Okay, I think we're making some headway. I took another cut off camera. We're still a bit chattery up this very top first cut. So I dropped our cutting, um, the cutter RPM, the spindle RPM down to 400. Increased our feed up to 500 millimetres a minute and took... Well, we're only running one insert in the, in the uh, face mill. So five inserts I've taken out. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to just modify one of the inserts. I'll go over to the grinder and I'll just modify the edge of it and I'll bring you back. Or I'll come back and we'll have another go. So these inserts have a large flat con um, contact area that cuts on the 45 there. So what I've done is I have reduced that. So it's only cutting on, it only has a small part of the insert engaged. So we'll put this in and try it. Same speed and feeds, just with a modified insert. See how it goes. Okay, that's beautiful. Yep, 
this area here, there's the slightest hint of the um, chatter from the, the, our first cut with the modified insert. And as you see, once we got to the end of the cut um, up this end here, I did stop the machine, put the revs up to 1000 RPM and ran back. So I think we're, we're, we're this is lovely. I wouldn't expect any better than that. That's good. So the question is now, do I keep the 1000 RPM and just do cuts through or do I reduce the RPM, cut through, increase it back to 1000 and do a back cut? I think, I think we'll keep the 1000 and we'll just do a new cut on a thousand. Unlock the knee, very important. very happy with that result. I'm tempted to um, tempted to leave it. Let me take one spring cut over the whole pass. I'll bring it around. Very hard to see because our light's not the best. So yeah, I'm in half a mind to leave it or run through a spring cut. I think I'll run through a spring cut. Alright, finally, I'm happy with those. So we finished up on a very light cut, uh, 1250 RPM on the uh, spindle. And our travel 
630 millimeters a minute. You do a lot of mileage walking around on this machine between cuts because the, um, the knee lock lever. Okay, I'd give that an 8 out of 10 anyway. Um, it's not worth pursuing anymore. That's plenty good enough for where we're at at the moment. So we'll get them unbolted flipped around and we'll machine up the other sides. Hard to see in the light, the graduations on the ruler. That's pretty close. Let's double check You make sure you're in your serrations properly too. Okay. So the more and more that I've been using this machine, I've slowly been sneaking up on the gib adjustments. Um, that will help it along immensely. And once the series of jobs are complete, like we've got these to do, and I've got other video footage of the machining on the tailstock riser and we have another big plate to do and another little job to do in here. Once those are all out of my hair, what we'll do is we'll, um, we'll do some accuracy tests on this machine. So we'll put the series of blocks down the, um, on the table. We'll do some machining on them and we'll do some accuracy, um, some measurement checks and see how the machine is really performing then and at that time we'll do our final um, give adjustments so anyway let's get fired up i'm not anticipating any problems uh, with chatter on this other side so we're running we're back to running a full count of inserts in our cutter uh, we'll still be around 800 rpm probably go a feed rate i go pretty rapid probably bring it up 500 millimeters a minute and uh, we'll just stick with uh, a millimeter depth of cut I don't want to do big cuts as I want to maintain as much thickness on these as we can so let's go okay we just have to relock the spindle next day um, after the machine's been shut off just keeps it secure in there and also if it's not you don't relock it doesn't it will quite often prevent you from starting the main spindle and don't forget
She likes a bit of pump Ari action. Bit of lube. Okay, just gonna do a very light finish pass. We'll bring the RPM up. We'll keep the feed rate the same. We'll come up to uh, 1250. That's fine, quite acceptable. Okay, I'll get these unclamped and we'll do a bit of deburring before we start tackling the edges. Hi, right, Kelly, we'll bring this one to a close here. Next video, we'll do the machining of the outsides and we'll see how far we get into the inside, um, how far our cutters will reach in. Originally, this was a job I was t probably going to do in the shaper, but I need these for a job now, so this is why we're just going to um, bang them through Olga here. So, and as I mentioned earlier, this is the preliminary machining of them. We don't know if we're going to get any movement in the steel, uh, so we'll get it all machined and we'll just go over it then. Now. The machine does need further gib adjustments. Well, it's not that bad. If there's a little bit in it, we could still, like in between the cuts, we could, I reckon we can still make a slight improvement on it. But uh, we don't know until we do the further gib adjustments, and we don't know exactly the state of the nation with how much wear is on this machine. So we will be doing uh, proper 
accuracy tests on the machine so I know where I am with it and its full capabilities, how far I can um, rely on it. So anyway, we'll bring this one to a close here. So thanks for watching and uh, we'll hopefully see you in the next video. Cheers.